Why should you still vote for Ron Paul, even though they say it's over? Why in the world would he be doing this? I thought I thought we were supposed to be the government, and and the Congress is supposed to be the government. Why are we allowing our presidents and executive branch to do so much? And this is this is to me why we're you know, we are, are approaching a a, a crisis, uh, but. We can change things. Two examples that I can use that, in spite of the, uh, you, you know, the difficulty and maybe some pessimism about what can be done, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know about Stop Online Piracy Act, right? You know that one? That's the attack. That was the bill that would have attacked the, uh, the, uh, the internet, control the internet. I mean, they have everything else, and the internet's still pretty free, so the government wants to take over. So they had the votes in the House and the Senate. And then there was an organized effort by the people to let their congressmen don't vote for this, and they removed it from the floor. Last, last year, uh, we had the audit the Fed bill up, and uh, uh, the, um, we, we had all the Republicans support it. We passed it in the House of Representatives. The, uh, the final version was watered down. We had a partial audit, but the fact that it passed the House was a response not by me twisting arms because I don't have uh, uh, I don't have political or legislative clout in Washington, but the people who knew about it got hold of their congressmen and legitimately twisted their arms to say vote for the audit of the Federal Reserve. So. The, the real message here is government is a reflection of the people. If we're complacent and, uh, and we're just quite willing to give up our freedoms in an incremental way, uh, then it's going to continue that way. But when people get fed up uh, and send a message, the politicians in Washington, sometimes they don't have a whole lot of strong beliefs. I don't know if you ever recognize that or not. They <laughs> but they do want to stay in office. So if you can't get them out of office and think they should be out of office, put the pressure on them where they think they could lose and they will come your way in, in order to change their viewpoints. And this is, this is, I think, what's going to happen. I think the country is waking up. It is so different. The politicians I know and the other candidates, I think they're well-intentioned, but I, I don't think they're hearing the people. The people in Washington, I don't think they hear the people. If, if they did, they'd cut spending a little bit. And they would, uh, they would quit running up these deficits. The American people right now, 80% of the American people said, you know, you've had your chance. You've been in Afghanistan for 10 years. It's time to come home from Afghanistan. But no, uh, generally the candidates have just pushed, no, we need more and more and more, and we have to be in Syria, we have to go into Iran, and, uh, and on and on. But uh, if that's going to end, and I tell people who disagree with me on, on the policy, they, they think that we should be there and have to be there, but it's not going to happen, it's not going to work that way, because the money is running out. And all great nations who overextend themselves overseas are always brought down for financial reasons, and that's what we're on the verge of doing. Fortunately, uh, that crisis that we put up with in the, thir in the uh, 60s, when there were missiles in Cuba and I was drafted, uh, we didn't have to resolve that with a nuclear exchange. They had 30,000 nuclear weapons, but their, their system failed. So our system eventually uh, will fail. And the fact that the Soviets had that much and they were that dangerous and they were a hard lot bunch of people to deal with but here we're getting people are beating the war drums to start using weaponry and using force to go into Iran and uh, they don't even have a weapon. Nobody's even proved that they've worked on it. Yes, they're bad actors. They're bad actors, and you can't trust them. But North Korea is probably much worse than the, the Iranians, and they do have nuclear weapons. So it just doesn't add up. And just remember, the Soviets collapsed not because we had to fight them. They collapsed because they overextended themselves. So our greatest danger is here at home. Nobody's going to invade this country. That's one thing that we know. Our military wouldn't allow
But we have to think seriously about uh, how we got off track. And I, I think it occurred about 100 years ago. And one thing that happened is that uh, they, they, the consensus was that liberty had two parts to it. The founders never understood this because liberty was liberty. It was your life. It was your liberty. It was your property. Life, liberty, and property. Fruits of your labor that all belong to you. And your personal liberty, your religious liberty, your social liberties were the same as your economic liberties. But in the last 50, 60 years, we've had a group saying, well, economic liberty is one thing, but I have to tell you what to do with your own body and what you can smoke and drink and everything else and what your social habits The reasons I can think of are, the stronger the showing for Ron Paul, the more likely other politicians will see how many delegates votes he gets, and hopefully some of them might improve their behavior based on their own self-interest. The nomination process is only over after the convention. Why should people give up? Just because they're told to. It's down to two candidates right now. They say Ron Paul can't win, but I've never met an independent nor a Democrat who would pick Romney over Obama. It's not just a campaign to get Ron Paul to be the president. It's also to get new people to understand the ideas of liberty. When he gives a speech, it's not just about getting delegates. It's about bringing in new people. The remaining primaries are on the screen. You can see the link in the description to volunteer to help. A few hundred people in the right place could make a big difference. Win or lose, it doesn't cost you anything to vote. You won't lose anything if you try to get Ron Paul elected and he comes in second. I have to say, I'm not an absolute libertarian. And I don't agree with everything Ron Paul would do. But he seems like the only genuine candidate that has a plan to solve major problems. Try to understand the reasoning behind Ron Paul so later somebody else can't hijack the movement. And it might be useful to learn to recognize fake libertarians. And by fake I don't mean moderate or someone who's just libertarian leaning. Leave a comment if you can guess why having private prisons could be against libertarian principles. Bye. But the truth is, it's, it's a mutual thing. If, if no one cared, there'd be, a, there'd be a lot of limit to what I could do or anybody could do. And it isn't, you know, about me as an individual. I'm just in a place now that I have a message that's been around a long time. It's the message that made America great. The foundations have been laid as economists are out there by the time to my hundreds. In the 50s, I couldn't find the information I was looking for. I was searching uh, for this truth. But the truth is out there. It's on the internet. It's part of what America made great, but we do have to sort out truth from fiction. And uh, it, unfortunately, you have to be very questionable about what your government tells you, because sometimes they will mislead you on economic matters or the reasons to go to war. It, but, but we have to. I mean, the economy, oh, the economy is thriving and, it, uh, it, uh, and there's no inflation. I mean, uh, where, I asked Bernanke the other day in, in the committee, I said, have you ever gone shopping in the grocery store? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the inflation is here, and as the destruction of the currency, and this is why the middle class is being undermined. During an inflationary period, the wealth is transferred from the middle class and the poor to the wealthy, and here we have it. We have you know, from left, right, and center are recognizing this, but not everybody understands exactly why, that there is a 99-1. But who got the bailouts? The wealthy got the bailouts. They were supposed to be providing houses for the poor. They got the bailouts, and they were gambling with derivatives, and who, got, who lost the jobs? The middle class, and they lost their homes. So we, we aren't told the truth too often, uh, and we have to look at the numbers. Unemployment figures are fudged. The, uh, uh, the inflation figures are fudged. The reason we go to war. So when they beat the war drums, which they're beating all the time, make sure you ask the question. Make sure you ask the congressman, are you sure? Are you sure before you go marching off? And don't let the presidents go to war without coming to the Congress. Don't let them say, well, I got my permission for the United Nations. That has to stop. The one, the one thing that I have come to a conclusion in is, and I put this in the book on the revolution, that truth is treason in the empire of lies. And uh, if you tell the truth, uh, 
you, you can get yourself uh, in, into a bit of trouble, but I'm convinced truth wins out in the end. I really do. And I think this is what's happening. The people are waking up, and the, and the information is there, and there's a tide change. Exactly the day this is going to happen, I don't think anybody knows that. But the seeds have been planted. It's an idea whose time has come, let me tell you, and they can't stop us. Samuel Adams advises, don't worry about waiting for the 21%. He said, just get that irate, tireless minority uh, starting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men, and uh, things will come out all right. And that is what's happening. Believe me, across the country, I try to keep up, but every place I go, I find more organization and more people studying, young people, college kids studying and reading about the Federal Reserve. It's the first time in 100 years that this is happening. So there's reason to be optimistic. So what I do is I make the case for individual liberty, believing that liberty is something that comes to us in a very special way, and that we had a good experiment that the Constitution would protect us. If we did that, I believe it would introduce once again the notion and the goals that we should have of achieving peace and prosperity and restore the greatness of America. Thank you very much for coming. We hope you appreciated our, our uh, streaming from the site here, uh, the Ron Paul speech at Texas A&M University this evening. If you'd like to help us uh, do some more of this, uh, there's another event in San Antonio on Saturday, actually two events. We are planning on trying to get over to San Antonio and to broadcast that to you as well. We would like to have as many viewers as possible. We hope that you will support Win Liberty. We do depend on donations. We are the alternative media. We have no sponsors. We have only people that are willing to come and do this and pretend that they're professionals. Uh, some of them are actually that's good because otherwise this would never get out but uh, at any rate we are very proud to be here with Ron Paul tonight we appreciate your uh, attention tonight and we hope that you will uh, help support Win Liberty a little bit if you possibly can any donation will be appreciated very much because we want to do this again